join me in another cooking video where I just take my camera around for a week of different meals that I'm making in my kitchen. Now some of these meals you'll see are breakfast, some for lunch and others for dinners. I am just giving you a good mix of the different meals that we make in our home. For this very first recipe, I'm actually making a shepherd's pie. And the reason why I decided to make this is because I had a family event that I had to go to um, the day before this video. Actually, it was a few days before this video. And they had a bunch of leftovers that they sent home. Like, hey, you have a large family. Take these and you guys can eat this. And there was this giant pan of mashed potatoes. And I decided that there was probably no way that we would be able to eat all these mashed potatoes before they went bad. So I made a huge shepherd's pie. Now you'll see later on um, when I'm making this that I actually made it like way too big and it like spilled all out of my cast iron um, skillet here. So Anyway, that's what's kind of inspired this meal. So I don't have to make the mashed potatoes that are going to go on top of the shepherd's pie. So I just started off by cutting up some veggies. And as always, I always save all of my veggie scraps. I just put them inside of a Ziploc bag and put those in my freezer. And I'll use those when I make bone broth the next time. Adding veggie scraps add a lot of nutrition to your bone broth. And it really adds a lot of flavor. So just getting a quick cleanup done here while all of my chopped veggies are sauteing on the stove. Also, I don't know if you guys can hear the noise kind of in the background. I am actually sitting outside recording this voiceover. Um, it is a beautiful day here. It's fall time and it's so pretty, but I didn't really realize how windy it is. So if you hear all that like rustling around, that's just the trees blowing. Hopefully it's not too annoying. Okay, so I have all of my veggies and I added in some meat to my cast iron skillet and I'm just going to brown that and then I'm adding in a bunch of different seasonings. I did salt and pepper, I added in some parsley, a little bit of garlic and onion powder. Now I'm adding in a couple of tablespoons of soy sauce and tomato paste to season my um, shepherd's pie. And then I added in a couple of tablespoons of flour and some homemade bone broth just to thicken it and kind of add like a liquid or juice or sauce, I guess sauce is the right word. Yeah, sauce <laughs> to the shepherd's pie. And then I added in a few frozen veggies. I had some corn and peas. And then here is that ginormous pan of mashed potatoes. So once all of my meat was cooked through and my sauce sauce was boiling and bubbling. I topped it with a bunch of mashed potatoes and I just kept adding more and more in and I put some foil down on the bottom of my stove because I recently cleaned my stove and I was like, oh my gosh, this is totally going to leak. I'm so glad I did that because it did leak everywhere. And so then I was able to just throw away the aluminum foil rather than have to clean my stove out again. And then I had to clean my stove top because while I was making it, it also spilled out a little bit on there. I mean, no big deal. Obviously, I, this is all clean up and it was really nice because this shepherd's pie fed my family twice. And so we actually had this for lunch and dinner on this day. Before bringing it over to the table, I laid a towel down um, again, just so I didn't get this all over my table runner and my table. And then I kind of thought, you know, I don't know why I don't do this every time I bring a meal over because when the kids are kind of like dishing everything out, things always spill. And this would be kind of nice because then I can just go throw all the towels in the laundry and not have to worry about it, you know, getting all over the tablecloth and runner and all that. But anyway, this was really, really good. These mashed potatoes were um, really delicious because they had bacon and cheese in it. So very delicious meal. All right. So on this same day after lunch, I am doing a few things in the kitchen um, during my kids nap time. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm actually making a little bit of baby food. My baby is definitely eating all like regular food at this point. But um, 
There is a one night in the week when I take my kids to an event called the Wanas. It's like a place that you go to. It's a children's program where you can like memorize Bible verses. They have game time. It's really fun. And all of my big kids go to it. And on that evening, I actually leave the two youngest home with my husband. And since I'm not there to nurse my baby right before bed, I always tell my husband I like come to feed him a little something. So I was buying those go-go squeezes or whatever they're called, um, little like baby food in the pouch things. We call them go-go squeezes. But anyway, so I decided to make some baby food. I just got these Kia Babies little storage containers. Perfect for baby food. I've actually used them for a few other things by this point too, but they're really nice to store baby food in. So I'm just blending up some peas. I added in a little bit of butter because I do think that fat is so important for babies, especially if it's a good, healthy fat. And so I am making him some peas with some butter and I'm putting those in my storage containers. Now I don't put the lids on them right away because these are still really hot. So I'm going to let them cool a little bit. And then I'm also doing some butternut squash and same as the peas. I'm just adding in a little bit of butter with the squash and some salt. I'm not exactly sure how he's going to like the green peas because, um, I don't know. He likes peas whole, but I'm not sure about a mashed up, but he loves anything that is, um, squash like or anything orange I should say like pumpkin um butternut squash carrot so I know he'll be good with the squash but I'm not sure about the green peas we'll see about that after I got all the baby food done, I decided to move on to get some rolls going. Tomorrow, I'm actually going to be making a soup for lunch, and so I want to have some sourdough rolls with that. So I am just starting them off, and what I do, since I do not have a stand mixer, I'm just pouring everything into my bread machine. Now, if I'm making bread, it can actually just stay in here, and then um, it'll rise in the bread machine, and then I'll actually bake it in there. But because I'm making rolls, I'm just going to do the part of it like kneading, in here since I don't have my mixer this is how I'm going to knead my bread and then I will take it out and put it into a bowl and then I will shape them later on. So this is a sourdough dinner roll recipe that I'm following. I actually got this recipe over off of my sister's blog, Farmhouse on Boone. So if you want this exact recipe, you can search it on her blog. And then as far as the bread machine goes, I do have that link down in my description box below because People are always asking me about the bread machine I'm using. So I absolutely love it. It works so well for kneading anything. And also I love using it to make bread. So I got my dough all done. I'm putting it in a bowl and I will just let that sit and rise until it doubles and I will shape these tomorrow. All right, I wanna take a quick moment to thank today's video sponsor, Element. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink with everything you need and nothing you don't. I personally love the Element drink mixes. Everybody in my family does. And at this point, I have shared them with lots of different family and friends and everybody loves the flavors. There's a lot of different flavors to choose from. Some of our favorites are the grapefruit, the raspberry, and the watermelon. The thing that I love most about Element is that they're made with no sugar, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers. So it's all the good stuff and it's suitable for those who are following a keto, low carb, or paleo diet. It has no extra junk added in. When you sweat, the primary electrolyte loss is sodium. And when sodium is not replaced, it's common to experience muscle cramps and fatigue. An element is formulated to help you with those types of discomforts. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. That is eight single servings with any Element order. This is a great way to try all the different flavors or even share it with a friend. You can get yours at drinkelement.com slash our oily house. That's D R I N K L M N T dot com slash our oily house. Or you can use the link down in my description box below. All right, so for this next meal, this is actually going to be a breakfast. You see some pumpkin seeds sitting there. My kids carved some pumpkins yesterday and we roasted the seeds. And so those are sitting there. They'll probably have that for a snack throughout today. I'm starting off by making some sausage patties. I find that it's really easy, like right whenever I open up my sausage, just to cut them into little patties. And I'm just gonna fry these in my cast iron skillet. Anytime I'm doing something with sausage, I always add a little bit of bacon grease because I find that it's just not quite 
I don't know. I, they always like stick if I don't add a little extra grease. So that's why I'm adding a little bit to there. And I'm also going to be making some toast. So this is some leftover bread that we had from a couple of days ago. And I think that the easiest way to make toast for one, when you're making a lot of it, and two, if you're using like homemade bread, is instead of using a toaster just to melt some butter on a cast iron skillet and then to just toast it on there, I find that when I use a toaster with homemade bread, it all like... I don't know, doesn't like fit in the slides perfectly because it's not the exact shape as regular bread. So I find it easiest just to fry it up on the stove like this. So I'm getting my bread going in one cast iron, my sausage is going in the other, and now I'm also going to fry up some eggs. So for breakfast, we're just doing like little sausage fried egg sandwiches. I did like an open face sandwich because I felt like the bread was a little bit thick for two slices, but it's been a really delicious breakfast. Um, pretty easy to make and it's very filling and I love that it has a lot of protein. Definitely my favorite way to start off the day is with lots of protein. All right, so today for lunch, I am making a wild rice soup and I am making my roll. So my dough rose overnight last night and now I'm just separating it into eight equal parts and shaping them into um, little rolls and I am placing them into a baking dish. I did grease this with some coconut oil first just to make sure nothing sticks. And then after I got all of my rolls into my pan, I just covered it with the towel again and I let them rise for a couple hours before baking them. All right, so for my chicken, I have some chicken drumsticks. I just got some more chicken from my sister's farm, and she said that she had a bunch of extra chicken drumsticks. Typically, I just get whole chicken, but I was like, you know what? I can honestly take drumsticks too. So I went ahead and just bought those this time, just because she said she had a bunch of extra and we like those. So I drizzled them with some oil, add a little bit of salt and pepper to them, and I just got those in the oven. You'll see like like multiple times throughout the video where I'm like taking my apron off, putting my apron back on. I cannot nurse with the apron on. And since I still have a nursing baby, the apron has to come off when I go and nurse the baby and then put it back on when I get back in the kitchen or else I'll like destroy all of my clothes. I love cooking with an apron because it keeps my clothes clean. And also I use it as a towel. I put things in the pocket of it. I use it as a hot pad. I just, I use it for everything. I love, love having an apron. <laughs> so Anyway, for this wild rice soup, I am dicing up some carrots and some celery and some onions, and all of this will go into my soup. And then you also saw that once my chicken drumsticks were finished cooking, I shredded all the meat off the bone and I kind of chopped it up a little bit to make it in little hunks. And then I did save the bones and I will make that into bone broth. I love having homemade bone broth, like just like today when I'm making the soup, I already have a jar in my refrigerator. So that'll make this soup really easy because I already have the broth ready. But because I'm using all of the broth in the soup, I'll have to get another batch going. So I'll have broth available the next time I need it. All right, so I'm going back to the rolls here. I'm making an egg wash to put on top of it. I'm just scrambling up one egg and I'm brushing the top of the rolls with that. That just gives them that nice golden brown color. Um, it's not necessary, but I think it's really pretty. And I like the presentation and the rolls. Oh my gosh, these were so good. Um, adding in a little bit of cream here to my soup. It's a creamy rice soup. And then a little bit of flour just to thicken this. Um, not totally necessary, but I like a little bit of a thicker soup and I find that it's way easier to feed to the baby if it's a little bit thicker. He loved this soup and actually everybody did. They all love this. They all love the rolls. And I think that when I add a bread dish to soup, everybody just eats it even better. They just, I don't know, they go so well together. I was even dipping the bread into the soup. Now that my baby is starting to eat, I got him some waterproof bibs. These are also from Kia Babies, just the same as those storage containers. I'll actually link these down below if you guys want to check them out. Next meal here, I am actually making some pork ribs. We have some ribs down in the freezer and pork ribs are always one of those things that I love making, but something that just is a little bit more time consuming. So I have to think about it a little in advance because they take several hours. I mean, if you want it to be good, they take 
take several hours to cook because I like to slow cook them. So I'm starting off actually by making a homemade barbecue sauce. Um, we didn't have any barbecue sauce and I like to make my own. It's very easy. Actually, I just Googled up a recipe and then I did make a couple of changes to it just with different things that I had, but the main ingredient really is just ketchup. So making some barbecue sauce. And then I'm getting some beans going in my Instapot because I'm going to make some homemade baked beans and some coleslaw for this, um, for this meal. I thought those were like good things. Now, typically like for me, I would love to make like macaroni and cheese with pork ribs. Like that's something that I think is really good with them. But none of my kids, for whatever reason, does not like macaroni and cheese. Like if I make a huge thing of macaroni and cheese, they're not going to love it. So anyway, I decided to do baked beans and I did make some French fries and we had coleslaw. So so the first thing I'm doing with my ribs is I am rubbing them with a dry rub. It's just all kinds of seasonings mixed together. This gives it some really good flavor. And then I mix it together with the barbecue sauce. And like I said, I'm just going to slow cook this in the oven for several hours. We actually have this pork rib recipe over on our cooking blog. So I will link that down below for you. If you're interested in making some ribs, this is so good. And the recipe just calls for barbecue sauce. But like I said, I made my own but you can definitely use store-bought either way is fine um, this is just how I made it so doing it all here in my Dutch oven and I put the lid on it and stuck it in the oven um, just low temperature and I'm gonna let that slow cook while I am working on the other sides to go with this meal all right, so for the coleslaw, I'm actually doing a creamy coleslaw. I had some leftover mayonnaise and sour cream in my fridge. That's like ingredients I don't always have on hand, but because I did, I decided to go, go creamy with this. Now, I think I added in more sour cream than mayonnaise, but I think it would have been better if I would have done more mayonnaise and sour cream. So anyway, it was actually, it was really good, but I just think that it could have been better. It didn't have as much flavor as I expected. But anyway, this is just mayonnaise, sour cream, a little bit of sugar, and some salt and some celery seed, but I did not follow a recipe. And I think because I made such a large amount, I really needed to add in some more salt and celery seed just to give it even some more flavor. We added more in at the table when we ate this, but it was still really good. All right, so for the um, baked beans, I am cooking some bacon. I'm not going to need all of this bacon for the baked beans, so you'll see that I use this in my recipe tomorrow, but I'm going ahead and just um, frying up some bacon, and then I add in some sauteed onions because I think bacon and onions is what makes baked beans so good. And now I'm making the sauce for this. You guys notice when I'm measuring, I'm like not one to really measure. I typically don't measure at all, but I still like to use teaspoons and tablespoons. That's just the easiest way to get them out. But you can tell that I just like pour it in and it always like spills out over top. So if it calls for a tablespoon, I'm probably really doing a tablespoon and a half. I don't really pay much attention to that. I just kind of wing it when I'm cooking. So the beans are done now and I'm just straining them and then I'm going to add the sauce into the beans that I made. So for the sauce, it was tomato sauce, lots of different seasonings and a little bit of apple cider vinegar. It was so good. Again, this was another recipe that I just kind of Googled up and then I actually, this was two recipes. I Googled up a recipe and I liked some of the things in the one and some in another one. So I kind of like did them, um, kind of mixed a couple of different recipes together for this. That's just the way that I cook. I'm not really a big, huge recipe follower, but these baked beans were pretty liquidy. And so I put them in the oven and I baked them with the ribs for a couple of hours and that really thickened them up. Um, they were so delicious. All right, so I am taking all the bacon out and just putting it into a little jar. And like I said, I'm going to be making something with these tomorrow. Um, something new that I've never made before. I'll share it with you here in a little bit. So when I'm serving this up, last minute I decided to make some homemade fries. I wasn't sure if it'd be enough just because pork ribs or any ribs for that matter is not as much meat as it looks. I'm like, oh man, this might not be enough food for my family. So I went ahead and like fried up a bunch of french fries, but it was plenty. It was so good. We really enjoyed enjoyed that dinner. All right, so this is the next day and I am actually making some bacon cheddar waffles. I had some leftover bacon and I had the idea to make these waffles. I'm not really even sure what made me think of it, but again, it's just a recipe that I found online 
They were so good. We actually fried up some eggs with it. And it was kind of like a breakfast sandwich, but with a bacon cheddar waffle. My kids were like so weirded out about it at first. They're like, wait, do we put syrup on it? It's like, no, it's just like savory. Just think of it as like bread. And you could definitely eat these on their own, but we ate them with eggs and it was a really yummy breakfast. So in the recipe, or really for a lot of waffles, you separate the egg yolk from the whites and um, blend the white until soft peak forms. It just makes a fluffier, more delicious waffle. And so I know it's an extra step, but it's really good. And it gave me an opportunity to show my daughter how to separate eggs because I don't think that ever came up yet. So I was like, hey, wait, have you ever seen me do this? And she said no. So I went ahead and showed her how to separate an egg. I just feel like that's just one of those things that you, you need to learn. And so I got to show her how to do that. Um, so anyway, when you get your waffle batter all made, I did use some buttermilk in this as well. You just add bacon and cheddar cheese to this. And like I said, this was just the leftover bacon that I had from my baked beans from the day before. And then I got out that waffle iron that I don't love. <laughs> I talked about in like a video back how I'm like, I hate making waffles because it's so messy and then like the next video I start making waffles again so anyway I did find though if I greased it well and I didn't put as much batter in it actually didn't get dirty like nothing ran down the side so it's not really that bad and these were just so good so probably will be making these again so anyway guys that is the different meals that we made this week, like I said, I wanted to kind of show you a little sample of like breakfast and lunches and dinners, all the different meals. I often get asked why I make such a big meal for lunch. And honestly, when you have a large family, I feel like it's just as easy to make like a whole chicken and sweet potatoes and a veggie or something instead of like dishing out like 10 sandwiches. I don't know. It's just less time. I think it's healthier. It's more filling. And so this is truly what I do. I make, I guess what some people would call a dinner for lunch. And we have big full breakfasts too. We rarely eat like cereal. That's kind of like a special snack in my house. Not really like a breakfast. I just don't think it would fill my kids up. They are just all really big eaters. They need protein and lots of fat. And I don't know, I think like a bowl of cereal would just wouldn't quite do the trick. I think they would all say they were hungry like an hour later if I fed them cereal for breakfast. So we truly do eat big meals for all of our meals, but I have lots of boys. They're big eaters. And so I find this just the easiest way to feed my family. And like I said, cereal, like that would be something that we do for a snack. And, um, that's another thing. We don't really snack that much. I mean, we do on like a family like movie night or like on the weekends maybe, but during the week, we don't really do too much snacking. And so I think they fill up on these big hearty meals. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you're new here, please that subscribe button. I get out a new video every single week.